Hey guys, I have another special guest for you today. Very exciting. I'm out in the Lost Creek Wilderness in Colorado with my friend Pika. We're on a little weekend backpacking trip. Pika is another through hiker. She hiked the same year that I did, the AT in 2018, but she's also done some more trails. So I thought it would be really cool to bring her on the channel and let her talk about all the different cool trails that she's done. So you guys can hear more perspective about through hiking rather than just from me on the AT. So welcome Pika. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. So Pika, first things first, how'd you get your trail name? <laughs> Pika is short for Pikachu, and I got it because even in my 30s, I'm still an avid Pokemon Go player. You're um, not the only one of those I know. Yeah, <laughs> Valk is too. I'm about to be level 41, so... Is that good? It's pretty good. Nice. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. So, Pika, remind me, we hiked at AT the, the same year, but we didn't actually meet on the trail. How did we first meet? That's true. I think I started a week later than you on the AT. Um, and you finished about a week later than me, right? So right. we were about a week apart the entire time. Yeah. So I um, first met Glowstick officially. I had been following her on Instagram and I had heard a ton about her because my our, we have a mutual really good friend, Girl Scout. Shout out to Girl Scout. Um, so she hiked with glow stick at the start of the AT and then joined me for the second half and I just heard nonstop about glow stick, glow stick, glow stick. <laughs> Girl Scout's an angel. <laughs> I love her so much. So when I came out to Colorado to do the CT, I was a little nervous about starting. What's the CT? They might not know. The Colorado Trail. So it, that's one of the trails she's done, the Colorado Trail. It goes from Denver to Durango. Most people hike it southbound. and. I, I don't know why I had done the AT already, which was over 2,000 miles, and the CT is a little shy of 500, but I was really nervous for some reason about logistics, about it being more remote. In 2019, it was a little bit more remote. Uh, there was a lot less people out there. Um, so I knew that Glowstick lived in Colorado, in Boulder, and I reached out to her and I was like, hey, would you wanna do the first couple of days with me? And she was like, heck yeah. So she hiked the first two days with me, um, section one of the CT, and it just made the whole trail go a lot smoother. Oh, that's awesome. Sorry guys, there's a lot of mosquitoes <laughs> out here this morning. <laughs> Um, yeah, that was a really fun couple of days, and I would just love to do the CT someday. That sounds awesome. It's, I think it's the most prettiest trail in America. Oh, so you've done the AT, you've done the CT. What else? You've done one other one? I did the Washita Trail um, that runs, most people hike it eastbound, and it runs Oklahoma to Arkansas, and it's a little over 200 miles. Nice. So of those three trails, you think the Colorado Trail is the prettiest, which one do you, would you say was your favorite? Is the CT your favorite? <laughs> I can't pick favorite. Oh, okay. sorry, sorry. <laughs> I would recommend the CT to anyone. Um, the AT will always be my first love. And I actually, I went back after the CT and did the 100 mile wilderness again going southbound. That's my favorite section. Because I love so it. So good. Yeah, and I didn't have enough time the first time to jump into all the lakes and take my time. So this time we did it right. Oh, that sounds awesome. I would love to go back there at some point, like in the fall, when the full fall colors are out, because it was just hints of those when I went through. But I like to see it like full on. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Nice. So, okay, what about the Washita Trail? What did you think of that one? I I guess my main thought when I was doing this trail is it's going to be so easy. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to be doing 30s every day, and I'm just going to fly through it, and it's going to be super easy. No. <laughs> uh, Oklahoma is not flat, um, and there's just as many rocks as there is in Pennsylvania, oh, which was gosh. a huge surprise. Um, and guys, they call Pennsylvania on the AT Rocksylvania for a very good reason. Yeah, so um, the negatives of that trail was it w was actually more difficult, so don't go in with the mindset that it's going to be easy. Um, prepare for a lot of rocks. Um, there's also a lot of bushwhacking. The trail is Ooh. not very well maintained, so there's a lot of 
not really wayfinding, but just overgrowth on the trail that like brambles would scratch me up every day. Like my legs would be all cut up. Oh God, that um, sounds terrible. There, there's a crazy amount of spiders too. Oh no. I, I don't not like spiders, but there was like I every like spiders. <laughs> species of spider was there, I felt like. Um, but the pros of the OT is there's a beautiful hut system. Um, so you can go shelter to shelter. They're nice. really nicely made, um, pretty new. Um, so that's cool. There's also a huge trail community, um, which shocked really? me. There was yeah. a, quite a bit of trail magic, um, just in forms of coolers placed along different pl places. Amazing. And, and then t tell them what uh, trail magic is, in case they don't know. In case you don't know, trail magic is wonderful. Um, it's the greatest. <laughs> it can be in a lot of different forms, but most of the time it comes in the food of for uh, food and drinks, and people can either set up a station where they're kind of parked somewhere that's a trail crossing and they're grilling out or they prepared some food or snacks to share with you. Or it might just be a cooler that you find in the woods magically that magically. has some beers and chocolate milks and <laughs> sweet tea in it. Um, or it could be like people giving you rides and it can be a lot of different things. So I had the coolers and then I reached out to the group a couple of times and we were able to get um, a shuttle um, from Lori. Shout out to Lori at the Bluebell Cafe because that place is a great stop to fill up your stomach on the best homemade biscuits and gravy. And there's um, a cheap motel that's right nearby that you can do your laundry at. Um, and she, she gave us a shuttle, which was really nice. Yeah. Nice. That all sounds wonderful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, let's see. So I think... Correct me if I'm wrong. I think you told me your coldest night on trail was on the Washita Trail. Is that correct? That is correct. <laughs> and how, what happened? How'd you deal with that? Oh my gosh. So we, we did this hike in November, me and my buddy John, who I met on the C team. And we knew it was gonna get cold. So I think I had, I had a 20 degree bag. I had a sleeping bag liner, um, fleece, puff, hat, gloves warm socks, um, but we just had a day where we woke up at 6 a.m. and it was pretty, it was raining hardcore and we knew it was supposed to rain all day long. So we just got out there and we had a 15 mile day to the next shelter, which we wanted to stay at to, to stay a little Get dry. Get rain, yeah. Um, but as the day progressed, it got colder and colder. I checked my phone at um, about five miles left and it was about um, 25 degrees and my buddy is a little bit more UL than me and he just had on trail runner uh, ch like short shorts oh, no. and uh, he has zero body fat <laughs> and so <laughs> I was like you just run just run and then at this point it started hailing so you're getting little bits of hail hit oh, you on your God. legs so I get there I'm pretty pretty blue get out of my wet stuff get in and um, it was just so cold there um, we had a line and that we hung up to dry our clothes on and then we had this tarp that we put down they had tarps in the shelter which was really nice so we covered the front of the shelter to keep the heat in um, that was smart and the best thing that that I'll say that I'm all I'm not I'm never gonna cold soak again <laughs> My stove, I'm anti cold soaking. I think my stove saved my life because we were able, like, our water froze, and we, oh were, my God. we were able to boil water. So we had at least we had a, a hot meal in us and some hot liquids to to warm us up a little bit. But in the morning, everything was frozen, and my dad's like, "Why didn't you sleep with your wet clothes?" Well, when it's it's 19 degrees out, you don't want to put your wet stuff right next to you. So no. everything was frozen solid. Um, it was the first time I'd even undone my shoelaces and I could not get my feet into my boots. So I ended up... Oh God, that's never happened oh, to me, but I've heard stories. Pro tip. Thank you, mom, for making me take this stupid space blanket with me. <laughs> She'd been encouraging me. She's like, oh, take this. It weighs an ounce. And I finally did it just to make her happy. But... <laughs> what we did is I ended up cutting up the space blanket, wrapping it around my feet, putting my socks over it, and then hiking in my camp shoes for the first two miles or so Whoa. until my boots could warm up a little bit to get them back on. Shout out to Pika's mom <laughs> for making her bring that space blanket. Thanks, mom. <laughs> 
Okay, let's see. What was your favorite section of the AT? Huh. Well, besides the 100 mile wilderness, I think it has to be the Grayson Highlands. I love the Grayson yeah. Highlands. I just went back there a few weeks ago. I have a video about it if you guys want to watch. It's just magical. There are wild ponies about. It's so pretty. We went through in the spring, so like flowers were out in that area. Just magical. Yeah, at that time we weren't doing super huge miles and we were just having a great time. Seeing the ponies like walk around you is really cool. Come up and lick salt off of you. Yeah, that's a great section. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite section of the CT? There, so the CT, kind of like the AT, it gets better and better every mile you go. Um, and you went south, south southbound. Um, but there is a section coming into Silverton, and you kind of have these switchbacks, and you're in a little bit of a canyon, and there's a waterfall coming down the canyon wall. Um, the wildflowers were popping like crazy at that time of year that I went. I was, I was started like July 27th and finished in August. So it was prime time and gorgeous. Nothing like mountain wildflowers. Yeah. By the way, guys, my friend Seth is the part owner of a historic hotel and hostel in Silverton. It's called the Avon. So if you're ever in Silverton and you're doing the CT, they're very hiker friendly. Make sure you check out the Avon. Yes, we stayed there and um, we had a group of, there was five of us and we were able to get two rooms across from each other that had bunk beds and nice. there are showers um, with shampoo, conditioner, and I think lotion. And you don't find a lot of hostels and things with even conditioner because us, us ladies with the long hair and sometimes guys with the long hair too, shout out to my friend <laughs> Valk who's right now giving me a look. <laughs> you don't often find places that give you conditioner. So that's, that's nice. They're thinking about their guests. Um, let's see, are you ever going to do another long trail? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I, I mean, if I had it, I do have it my way. I need to stop saying that, but, um, You do have it your way. Like that guy recently told me on the AT when I was back visiting, only you can make it happen. Yeah. So, that goes for you guys too. <laughs> it's hard once you get back into society to break away again yeah, for six months at a time. It's scary. You go through all the same fears and anxieties all over again but I want to do all the trails. You too, you too. <laughs> I'd love to do the full CVT after experiencing that little section that overlaps with the CT. Mm -hmm. um, so that would probably be my next long trail. I also would love to do the Bruce Trail in Canada. I've had my eye on that for a while. Oh, I haven't heard of that one. Yeah. Um, uh, and then for some shorter trails, the long trail, I think it would be yeah, great to... Yeah, I'd like to go back there too. Yeah. Maybe after my next like like longer trail, I'm thinking like go back and do the long trail, tack it at the end when I'm still in hiker shape because yes. I've heard the second half of it is hard. I've like, heard really that too. hard. <laughs> um, okay, where can people follow your adventures? I just have a few YouTube videos that I make after my hikes just to show family and friends what I experienced. And you can check that out on YouTube at That Hiker Girl. Nice. Also on Instagram. And there's an occasional tweet from me all <laughs> on That Hiker Girl. <laughs> nice. Okay, and before we say goodbye, is there any advice that you would give someone who's never done a long hike, they're thinking about going out and doing one of the trails, what advice would you give? Watch Audrey's videos. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, get a good understanding and of what kind of gear you want to take and what works for you. Don't listen to all the nonsense that's out there. For instance, I hate trail runners. I will never hike in them again. Um, my, I, my <laughs> feet do not ap appreciate trail runners. They're okay if I'm just doing an easy, easy trail, you know, no rocks, no roots, but putting on a backpack immediately, my feet are like, nah. Yeah. So I, I wear a hybrid boot that's lightweight, but it has ankle support. Cause if you roll your ankles like I do, you need that ankle support. Um, so find out what works for you, dial in your gear, and then just get out there and do it. I think I was in the worst shape of my life when I started the AT. And, and just, you did it, you I made it the whole way. It's, it's a lot of mental mindset, so just prepare. I actually read Zach Davis's book, and I think he said, make a list in there of reasons why you can't quit. <laughs> and I made that list, and when times were rough, I would go back to it and be like, These are, this is why I'm not ever gonna quit. 
So yeah, it that's great advice. It's it's funny. So I've met Zach Davis. He also lives in Colorado. He lives in Golden, and he sometimes holds these through hiker meetups when it's not COVID time. And I've like talked to him about his book made me like you know kind of fearful that I was going to get out there and not want to be there and want to quit. And then I personally got out there and just like had the time of my life for six months. And I said something to him. I was like, "What? Why are you fear mongering in your book?" <laughs> and he was like. Glow stick. I've met a lot of hikers, a lot of hikers, and most of them don't have this like fairy tale experience that you had. There are hardships on trail. Yeah. So I think I just, for the AT at least, you know, I, I had it very easy mentally, but I, that's not always the case. Like people have a lot of things they have to, you know, go through within themselves and deal with. So I think that's really great advice. Thanks. Well, thank you so much for being on the channel today. Guys, if you follow me on Instagram, and my handle's Audie Payne, by the way, then you will see Pika sometimes, especially mm -hmm. in the stories, because we're going on adventures, especially now that it's Colorado summer. We also ski together. Make sure you give her a follow and uh, give this video a like. Subscribe to the channel for more hiking and backpacking content, and I'll talk to you guys later.